up everywhere. You get dizzy, you probably throw up you everywhere. You have to do that thing when you get the yeah, candy. dude. All right, you need to stop. <laughs> That's what they do. You get the you're like you're doing something else. Just stop. <clears throat> That's what they do. And so I have a friend. That's all. All, all time. Every I, all you hear from him. He's I know. Make it so obvious. Dip. I don't even pack anymore like that. Pause. But. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what it's called. It's called, it's called patching. Joey, are you packing? <laughs> What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um... I feel like I've been around the world here. Um, I woke up, of course, at home, uh, did my morning video there, went to uh, about 75 miles, worked on a bathroom and a house and things, cut the crap out of my finger there, um, and came back here, cooked dinner, and I'm back here at the Red Brick House and ready to go down and do some work in the workshop. And my buddy, Philly 500, shout out to Philly 500, over 100,000 over 100,000 subscribers, and I couldn't be prouder of my son. He ended up um, sending me a message, and I had to pick up the phone and give him a call. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. Um, because I was like, what? So let me let me fill this in. Now, Philly 500, you know, he is blown up. He is incredible. He has stepped into the breach of Eagles content creation and is doing an incredible job. He is on the, the Jacob Sports once a week. Jacob Sports, who is uh, Dan Salio, who is actually a radio personality. He also does YouTube. You know, everybody double times this stuff these days. And Philly 500 said, he's like, you've got to watch this. He said, I was on the show, you know, talking about the Eagles and Hassan Reddick and how Barkley is going to be great because he's never been on a good team before. And the Eagles are a great team, so he's going to be, of course, you know, fantastic of course according to philly 500 and he said now now here's background dan salio okay when you look at him he's only a year older than me first of all he's a year older than me um originally went to university of maryland and then transferred to the university of cincinnati but before he ended up playing for the bearcats he transferred to the u where he was a teammate of michael irvin and Michael Irvin has been on his show a couple of times. They are friends. So let me give that background. Now, this is where it's crazy because what he's saying could actually make sense about the reason why they haven't done any moves in free agency. They're basically, they're tanking for Dion's son. Here's where you heard Dion a few hours ago today basically say, we're letting teams, some teams know, we ain't into you. We ain't into you. Don't draft us like Eli Manning. So you remember, the Chargers wanted Eli Manning, but they basically said, no, bro, we ain't going there. We ain't, we're, we're not doing that. And so they had to trade with New York because they wanted to go to New York. Let me play the clip because this is, if this is the plan, I don't know if this is legal or not. Oh, uh, that, that's, that's the case. But I would rather it go wrong and have gone out and made moves than be the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> well, how about this? <laughs> and do nothing. And what? And, and you want to hear? Hey, here's the Cowboys. Dak Prescott's contract is 21 percent against the salary cap this year. What a Death Star that thing is! And on top of that, you want to hear what Michael Irvin believes happening? What's he that? thinks that they're gonna, they're not doing anything. They're gonna roll into a season somewhere be eight and eight, or somewhere being 500, or a little below 500. And then they're going to draft Shador Sanders. 
next year oh, in the draft. Dude, they're schemers. They're and schemers. they're going to move on from Dak because they're going to have him play it out. And they're going to use Shador Sanders as leverage against Dak Prescott when his upcoming negotiations because of Dion's kid. And there's a chance Dion may replace Mike McCarthy as head football coach in Dallas. I, you know what? I strangely believe it. Because it, it, you're, wait, wait, as far out as that is, is that yeah. Dallas like? Yeah, it definitely is. I think it is because Dallas is schemers. They scheme. Um, you can, you know, you're friends with Mike Orvin. You had him on uh, before. If you ever have him on again, ask him. I believe, because I believe that when Terrell Owens was an Eagle and then the whole thing went bad, I believe. I believe Irvin, Sanders, and Owens planned to get him kicked off the Eagles by talking about McNabb. And they did an interview, and then he would go to Dallas. I think the whole thing was planned because I think they're schemers. So I could totally see that the Dallas Cowboys doing it. But I, I really believe that they did that. I would love to ask him that. All did right. you guys, did, did you plan, when that Terrell Owens interviewed and he was going to talk about McNabb, was that plan to get him to Dallas? Because they knew if he talked about McNabb, they knew he was going to get thrown off. The team was over. Okay, here, here, here's how you get to T.O. Ready? Talk. Yeah. First ballot Hall of Fame. Talk. Eagles. And most, no, most importantly, talk McNabb. He can't not comment on McNabb. He <laughs> actually <laughs> likes Andy Reid. But if yeah, you say uh, anything yeah. where he said, will you do this? Because <laughs> I've, I've gone up back. I've had back and forth with him. And I said this. I go, hey, man, everyone says that you were, you were moaning and crying in Philadelphia. And he turns around and says, I was moaning and crying. You better take a look at five. You want to see the biggest <laughs> moaner and crier? You should have seen him the day before. Then he starts going in. This guy's over at the, at the stall throwing up. Because this guy was so nervous for the Super Bowl, Andy yes. Reid went in and gave him a towel, and everyone. I started laughing. And I'm going, that motherfucker is ready for the Super Bowl. I don't believe it. He goes, I went out with a broken leg, and they're talking. Yeah, and I'm yeah. going, that's all you had to do was wind him up, man. He just he wouldn't shut it. up after that. And he goes, this guy's right. the biggest shit talker I've ever seen. He goes, you know who my quarterbacks were, Dan, Tim Rattay and Jeff Garcia. Those were my quarterbacks. Okay. All right, we're going to leave it there. So, do with this as you may. This is what Michael Irvin believes, that the plan is to get Dion and his son in with the Cowboys. Now, the only thing that doesn't make sense on what he said, the only thing that makes me have pause on that is he said that they're going to use secure – Sanders as leverage against Dak Prescott unless uh, and, and you know basically if Dak Prescott does not get a contract extension he's a free agent he is uh, there's no I don't know where you're using leverage where you're going to try and say hey you know Dak if you want to get a contract you got to take a low one or else we're going to draft secure Sanders now the problem with this is and, and and maybe it's not a problem you know they do have for compensatory picks. The thing about this is to get there, you're going to need to be one of the top two at two or three picks, which means you got to get there. You got to get there to be able to get that. Now I get it that Dion is basically going to tell, you know, if it's the Cleveland Browns, no, bro. If it's uh, the New York, no, bro. No, you know, I, I don't know if he's got enough power to go through and tell however many people that are in front of the Cowboys, he ain't playing for you, so to speak. And if that is the case, I don't know how the Cowboys would be able to do that kind of a plan that Dion is hired as a coach and his son literally tells all these teams, go take a hike. But then again, you know, what the Cowboys are sitting here doing, which is absolutely positively nothing, and they tell you that they're broke. And if they end up being in really bad shape, all those draft picks they have next year are higher draft picks. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I would love to talk to Michael Irvin about this and get uh, his lowdown and, and, you know, and, and so on. I, I Woo is all I could say.
So I think I'll do this as a premiere because this is some crazy shit. Shout out to my boy, Philly 500. I appreciate him. Um, and watching him, uh, you know, when him and I started doing stuff together, I think we were both about, I was around 30,000. He was around 20,000. And to see him grow the way he has grown, it's, it's actually really cool. And uh, him and I are, believe it or not, we're, we're rivals as far as teams goes, but we are really like family. All right, good people. Peace out.